acetyl-CoA is going to go into the citric acid cycle. And this is all you have to know about that. See ya. Just kidding. First of all, take a look at this image. Just remember that holy chemical reactions, like nine million of them, and lots of enzymes catalyzing these things. But look at this picture and tell me where is this happening? Where does this happen in your body? And watch my mousy mouse as it goes to the place where it happens. Where? This is actually happening in the mitochondrial matrix. So where did glycolysis take place? That was out in the cytoplasm of the cell. The whole cell cytoplasm went through glycolysis. And the citric acid cycle happens inside my mitochondria. So now we've got acetyl-CoA. Take a look. Here's acetyl-CoA. It came from pyruvate, exactly like we know. It's going to feed into this cycle and be transformed into citrate by citrate synthase and then into aconitate by aconitase and then to deisocitrase by isocitrate dehydrogenase. Dude, that's awesome. There will be a time that you will perhaps be required to memorize these, but not in my class. And instead, we just want to appreciate the fact that, dude, this is a cascade of chemical reactions that look come all the way around, and we're getting stuff off constantly. Here's some water that goes in. Here's some high energy electron carriers that come out. Look, there's even some ATP right over there. Here's some more ATP, more electron carriers, some carbon dioxide. Whoa, would you like me to summarize it for you? I'm really happy to do that for you. It's only because I love you. So let's add to this thing. Watch. The acetyl-CoA is going to enter this citric acid cycle. And mm, can't have it go that way. I don't know why because my brain can't comprehend the other direction. It could go any way we wanted it to. Acetyl-CoA enters. This is the citric acid cycle. It's also known as the Krebs cycle, and either one is totally fine. And let's summarize what we get out of this thing. First of all, wow, this is awesome. We actually get, oops, sorry. We get four carbon dioxides out of this mix. And we're done. We've actually produced all the carbon dioxide molecules that we are going to produce. We get, I'm going to summarize this puppy for you, we get eight high energy electron carriers. Eight of them. What? Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we now have a total of, what is this, 12? Yes, it is. High energy electron carriers. And we actually get some ATP out of this, which hopefully you're like, dude, who cares about high energy electron carriers? What about, oops, did I say two? Oh, I did say two. What about ATP? That's the thing that we really care about. And it is. That's totally the thing we carry about. We carry about our ATPs, but the high energy electron carriers are going to play into the next stage if we did nothing else. If this was it, if this was our end game, you rocked a total of four ATPs out of a molecule of glucose. And you might be like, wow, one molecule of glucose, four ATPs, jackpot. No, it's about to get way jackpottier because we're going to go to the electron transport chain. Don't cry. It's so cool. I'll be right back.